Hi, and welcome to Something for the Weekend, brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're a community interest company based in the main Paralympic host borough of Newham. And with me in the studio today, surprise, surprise, yes, she's actually been here for all we've We've lost count, haven't we, Judy? But um, as she's been with me since last March, locked down in my East London studio, our chair, the artist and activist, Julie Newman. We're going to come back to East London in a minute for some audio description, some proper introductions, and we're also going to tell you what we're dressing up to go out to stay and to do this week. But first, to the other end of our long virtual wheeled sofa to the West Midlands, tell us who you are, give us some audio dis description, and tell us what you're dressed up to go out to stay and to do today. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going first this week because I think I'm going to get upstaged otherwise. <laughs> um, I'm Robin Sergina, Business uh, Director at Together 2012 and an artist known as Angry Fish. Uh, yeah, we're up here in Sutton Coalfield um, in our little studio. Uh, behind us, we have some lovely red velvet curtains keeping us warm. Um, what do I look like today? I have a very clean, uh, shiny, silvery white hair. Um, where I have blue eyes behind no rimmed black armed glasses. Um, and today I am wearing a very pale gray round neck t-shirt um, with, um, it's actually a, a picture from um, a Frank Zappa album um, and uh, using uh, the very famous uh, picture um, that was used for all the everyman shows and stuff. Um, but the reason I'm wearing this is because Frank Zappa's band was called Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. And I am dressed up to stay, to go out to stay in, to go into an, a week, an entire week of being inventive. I'm going to use this week to see how many things I can be inventive in. You can have to tell us more about that in a minute. I can't wait to find out. But um, although perhaps I shouldn't know. <laughs> Hello, and I'm Tracy Sergina, and I'll start at the top. Today, I've got my hair in a ponytail, my very long blonde hair. And in my hair, I also have a wooden spoon, a brown wooden spoon, a silver whisk, and a multicolored spatula. Um, I've got blue eyes, pale skin, I'm wearing a green short sleeve t-shirt and over that I'm wearing a very cute, I must say, um, apron which has got a black background with a cute little kitty's face, a uh, little white kitty with big green eyes on it and a pretty pink polka dot bow on the side. And today, well this week, I'm going to be staying in to go out to stay in to do some baking Ooh. oh this is the bit where the virtual stuff gets really hard because what we want is some of your cakes or are you mm. bread or both what plans have you got well um, i love baking um savory and sweet so i'm gonna have a go at a couple of different cakes and i might make a tear and share bread Ooh. Oh, again, share it with us. Share I will. <laughs> Our bread for about the fifth week running came, shall we say, with not a very long use-by date. So we're um, still toasting it, rancid little bits of hard ends of crusts out of the freezer and waiting for yet another delivery, which I think will come in a couple of days' time. So, yeah, I'd love to do some baking, but I'm not actually terribly good at it, although... Might give it a go anyway. What is tear and share bread? Uh, it's where you make your dough. And luckily I have got a bread maker, so I can make the dough in the bread maker. And then you arrange it either in a circle or in lots of little buns and then stick those. You put them quite close together so when they cook, it sort of grows into each other. And then you just tear bits off that you can fill it with you know, oh, anything, pestos, garlic, bacon, sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, making me hungry now. 
Yeah, and us too. So I think we'll come back to East London for some introductions, some audio description and tell you what we're dressed up to go out to stay in to do. So I'll start with the back. Behind us, you can see a little bit of our Together 2012 graffiti banner. You can see a full picture on our website, www.together2012.org.uk. It's covered with images of all of the different arts activities we cover in a year so we've got live music poetry spoken word dance drama photography filmmaking visual art craft and much much more sitting in front of the banner is our teddy bear tanny waiting for the clockwork paralympics which as always are coming up in the second half of the show so we'll go back and introduce tanny properly then so like i say i'm Jude gosling also known as the artist g90 today my self-style Henard Corona crop is covered with a silver baseball cap. I've got pale olive skin with green eyes behind black plastic glasses. I've got black plastic wrist braces, mostly silver and black colored jewelry today. And I'm wearing a white t-shirt that says vinyl vibes on it in orange and there's also geometric shapes in turquoise and purple and i'm dressed up to go out to stay in to go to mixcon which is entirely online and entirely free and i think it started earlier in the week and is running through the whole of next week lots and lots of activities and i'm going to tell you about a couple of those when we recommend things for the week ahead later in the show julie who are you what do you look like and what are you dressed up to go out to stay in to do hello i'm julie newman i'm the chair of together 2012. Um, today i'm wearing a straw boater with a black band which coordinates rather well with my t-shirt which says um choose love uh, on a white background it's written in in black uh, I am actually wearing pearls, which I realised was a mistake against a white T-shirt, but they might glisten in the light. You never know. My um, auburn hair, I'm going back to auburn, blow all this gold and silver. I've got auburn hair. I'm saying it proudly, and it's draped casually over my shoulders. Um, I'm dressed up to go out to go to a picnic. Um I wanted originally to go to a picnic down by the river, but given that that's not really very sensible at the moment, I'm going to take the little dog, Precious, and we're going to go into the garden and we're going to have a picnic on Sunday. And we're going to do it as a virtual picnic with our friends Karen and Eve who are going to be virtually picnicking from home. You do save a lot of money catering for that kind of picnic. And we've also discovered, you know, dinner parties, all sorts of things. You do them remotely. It's amazing how little washing up there is <laughs> to do. So what have we got coming up today for you? As always, we have some of the work from this week's Together Art Club. We've got, in a moment, poems from the Together Pop-Up Poetry Club. We have a join-in from home craft activity with Tracy. We have a join-in with Stara. We have the activities for the week ahead. We have the Clockwork Paralympics and much, much more. And Robin, our, and finally spot this week, just tell us a little bit about that now. Yeah, we're getting a longer interview this week uh, with an artist called Patrice Name Barna. Um, he, he's a really fantastic actor and writer and producer um, and trainer of other artists um, and, and a really fantastic guy. And you'll, you'll hear a, a lot from him in a, what I think is a really powerful interview. Brilliant. And as always, by six o'clock on the day the show's recorded, which is a Friday, we have up our highlights and links page and the highlights and links page will have all of the poems and artwork that we're talking about today all of the links to the activities we recommend and also that video so you can see the interview again if you have yeah if you just don't 
want to watch the whole show. Although, of course, we would always recommend watching the whole show as well. But now it's time for poems from our pop-up poetry club. And we've gone back a couple of weeks to some poems that we didn't have a chance to read before because, unfortunately, due to illness, one of the shows was cancelled. So our theme today is poems on the subject of This Makes Me Smile. Now, do you want to start, Robin? Indeed, I shall. Uh, this is from one of our regular contributors, uh, Glory Sengo. Um, it says, it is entitled, sorry, It Makes Me Smile on My Face. When I was smiling, I was smiling at my friends. And Louise said to me, you've got a smile on your face. Do you want to have a barbecue with me? Yes. That will be super duper. <laughs> that is so great, Glory. Thank you, as always. Julie, I think you've got one from Alison Marchant, who's our club's programme leader. Yes, indeed. Actually, it's, it's, uh, it's quite moving. Um, this Makes Me Smile by Alison Marchant. My mother's garden, where I can feel the sun or wind on my face, Hear too the buzzing sound of the bees as they feed on nectar from the flowers. This makes me smile. I like the smell of the greenery after rain. The songs of the birds in the trees. This makes me smile. Hearing the children playing and laughing in the other gardens. And my mother's smile. This makes me smile. Oh, thank you for that, Alison. And Alison's been shielding with her mother since last March. I think quite a lot of our team have not really been home for far too long. I should just say, I think it's a good point actually to say, isn't it? Alison leads our club's programme when she's not practising as an artist herself. The Pop-Up Poetry Club takes place by telephone. We call you, we pay for the call. What happens usually is Noel, our engagement support officer, or Alison will phone you up sometime between about quarter past 10 and 10.30, add you to the conference call. At 10.30, people get together, they share poems that they've found elsewhere or written themselves earlier. Then there's a discussion about the week's theme. People ring off and write a poem and then come back to share it. Obviously, you don't have to write a whole poem in that time, although it's astonishing how many people do. And we do give you the subject for the following week, a week in advance. It's really open to everybody. We work on the principle that everybody's got something to teach. Everybody's got something to learn. And we welcome all disabled people and whoever you want to bring with you for support. So whether you've got a learning difficulty, a mental health difficulty, a long term health condition, you know, you might be a wheelchair user, you might be deaf or hard of hearing. Everybody is welcome at our clubs. So if you'd like to know more on the highlights and links page, all of these poems will be up in a minute. Well, in a minute, I say all of these poems will be up shortly, as quickly as I can do it. And you can find more details about how to join the clubs there. So Tracy, what's the next poem for us? I have one by Dawn Barber entitled Smile. It makes me smile when the cat looks up at me with those big green eyes. It makes me smile when the little robin sits on my garden fence. It makes me smile when I look at the, look back on memories of my mum and nan. The laughs we used to have. And to see someone walking their dog. And when the sun is shining, keep on smiling, smiling through. Oh, thank you, Dawn. As always, I really enjoyed that. So this is from Crystal Peasy and it's called The Flowers. What makes me really happy are flowers and plants. I like it when somebody gives me a bunch of flowers. When you receive the flowers, you should water them straight away. I love the colours of the flowers. I feel very happy when I plant flowers in my flat. I also feel very calm when flowers surround me. 
I feel joy in the smell of flowers. And I loved that crystal because it wasn't just about what makes you smile. It was about what brings you real joy. And that sense of it's not just the color and it's not just the appearance. It's also the smell and the smell can be the most important thing of them all. So what else have you got for us, Robin? Uh, again, I have one from Dwayne Bryan uh, entitled What Makes Me Smile. When I see my mother's face, when my lips taste a healthy dish, when I score a goal, when everything is okay, when the sun is shining at me, what makes me smile when I complete a marathon and I've run a mile? What makes me smile when I pass my college course and I've had no faults? What makes me smile when I've looked at my mum's face and she smiles? What makes me smile when I'm friends, when, sorry, when I'm with friends and we socialize for a while? That's what makes me smile when I've done some hard work and I get paid. That's what makes me smile. Thank you, Dwayne. And thank you, everybody, for reading. And it was I think some of those poems were so thoughtful and really, really evocative. And I think we all were able to smile with them. So I think finally, this is um, Julie Newman's. Yes, indeed. Although it was on the theme, I didn't call it What Makes Me Smile. Um, I don't know why. I got a bit anarchic, actually. Sorry well, you that. don't have to. It has to be said, you know, for everybody who might like to join in from home, it's a theme. It, it's not compulsory title. OK, thank you, Ju. Uh, this is called Blackbird Singing. The busy bird hops, then scuffles in the leaves under the overgrown hedge. The sound of her foraging has no threat, no hint of menace, but is gently reassuring all is well in the world. Her coat is speckled dark brown. Her bright yellow eyes sparkle as she pauses and looks up. She has no fear, just interest, for she knows that she can retreat, quickly flying into the dense growth of the bushes nearby. As the day ends and the day begins, the song of a bird rises and makes me pause. What bird is this with many songs? No brown speckles to camouflage, but black feathers shimmer his yellow beak giving voice to his songs. Her mate sings us into another world, his song rising above the roofs, the sound of traffic, the noises of man fade and have no worth. With him we soar and fly. The other world opens and Rhiannon brings us home. Oh, I don't know what to say about that, Judy, apart from I don't know how you managed to write them so quickly. And um, this didn't make me smile. I thought, oh, yes, blackbirds. They used to be the only birds we had in our garden. And then I had to stop feeding them because the dogs, are you just think of them as flying rats. And it turned out that the dogs could jump quite high and practically fly themselves. So um, I no longer have blackbirds in my garden. And that did not make me smile. But, um, but Julie, on the other hand, when you're at home, you've got a wonderful wildlife garden at the front, haven't you? Where you're I able do. to keep all the dogs and the cats out. Yes, it's... it's uh... It's it's segregated from the, from the rest, <laughs> of the, rest of the garden, and it's and it works well, and it's lovely because I can sit in my in my living room, uh, you know, especially sort of in the spring and the summer, and listen to the birds, and the little sparrows are chattering away, and the little blackbirds singing. It's lovely. It's really nice. Yeah, I think people aren't always aware that there is so much wildlife in the cities. Although again, in Canning Town, tends to be a bit more sort of fox and rodent based but moving <laughs> swiftly on to this week's art club the art club runs a session every tuesday for make and natter and every friday for still life and um, and in the still life sessions which we have on a friday morning Alison Marchant, our club's programme leader, who we've just described being multi-talented and multitasking, comes up with a photograph. We put that image onto Zoom, which is how we run the art club. It's on Zoom from 11 to 12 on a Tuesday and Friday. But we can also share that image by WhatsApp, by text or by email. And Alison starts by audio describing it. So if you're on a very small device or you don't have a good image, 
you know, it doesn't matter as much as it might do because we really examine that image. It's quite a mindful session. And then whatever you've got available at home, it might be colored crayons, pencils, ordinary pencil, charcoal, paints, pastels. You know, I think the variety in the pictures is always part of the pleasure. So we're going to have a look at this Friday's now. This is the original image with a red beret on a small grey metal stand sitting on a creamy white surface against a white background. In front of it from right to left are a pink Christmas tree decoration, two brooches with blue and green gemstones and a hair decoration made from brown fake fur with brown bows. This is a drawing in coloured pencil by Lee Brooker. Next is Sophia, who's used felt-tip pens. This is Dwayne Bryans, who's used paint. This is by Margaret Spence, and I think is drawn in pastels. And finally, we have Crystal Peasy, who's also used paint. Well done, everyone. So as I said, the Art Club also does a Make and Natter session on a Tuesday. And on a Tuesday, what you're able to do is either bring any craft activity or art activity with you that you might want to show other people, maybe get a little bit of feedback on or, or just work on in a sociable atmosphere or alternatively, Alison has recycled craft activities available each week that she leads. This month, as part of our kitchen carnival, we're focusing on the kitchen carnival. More about that later if we have time. But the website, which I'll put on the highlights and links page, is www.kitchencarnival.org. So there's also mask making activity and instrument making activity there and that's been one of the focuses this month so we'll just move on and have a quick look at some of the work from this week's make and natter session so this is from ellen goody she's making a collage by painting shapes in purple blue and green on blue paper cutting them out and pasting them onto yellow paper next we have more collages from duncan bridgestock using recycled card Duncan started by putting smaller pieces of white card onto two pieces of black card to create frames and then added shapes from more dark card onto the white background. His third collage this week uses a single piece of dark card on a white background with interesting shapes cut into it. Finally, we have Sophia who is partway through making a kitchen carnival bat mask. You can find the instructions for this and lots more join in from home carnival activities on www.kitchencarnival.org. So thanks to everyone at the Art Club. So now we're at that point in the program where we hand over to Tracy for join in with Tracy. Each week, Tracy leads activities for us based on things that you should already have at home and on our website under the join in from home pull down menu you can find all of the past activities where you can also join in with Tracy so Tracy over to you what are we going to be looking at this week this week I thought we would look at making animals from pieces of paper that sounds fabulous so let me pop the first picture up into the stream so yes this week it's um I've run out, I've actually run out of recycled um, leaflets. I've used so many. So this week I had to resort to a piece of paper. Um, but again, this project can be made with any leaflets that come through the door. Um, it's a very easy one. You just need a few pens, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, and a piece of A4 paper. Then what I did with the paper is um, cut it into equal strips an easy way to do that is to fold it in half then fold it in quarters and then fold it again and then that way you hopefully will get all the pieces of paper will be roughly the same size in width um so i've taken um eight pieces of eight strips of paper and laid them down i've sort of followed the clock so you've got a 12 and a six a three and a nine and then the other pieces go in between. So that would be two and a, 
two and a seven and a ten and a five or a ten and a four. <laughs> a ten and a four. So this is it is um a little bit tricky and but if you you know how if you need help to do it as I do quite often it's uh, you, you know you don't, can't always do it with one hand or two hands you might need three so basically I'm sticking the pieces together now starting with the 12 to 6 and the 3 to 9 pieces that makes a, a cross so when you've stuck all your pieces of paper together you then lift the one edge of your paper and stick it down you go all the way around the circle until you end up with a circle of of curved paper and that becomes the bottom you do that again with your other set of paper and as you can see i've made the top well the second ball it looks like a ball the strips of paper a little bit thinner and a little bit shorter because what we're going to do is put one on top of the other this is the finishing touches to my smaller ball it's a set of eyes ears a little nose mouth and a set of whiskers can you guess what i'm making <laughs> here we go this is my finished animal and i've made a cat so i've put the smaller ball on top of glued it on top of the bigger ball um and there is my two balls put together with my cat it's got a long curly tail and i think it looks quite cute yeah, I thought that was great, Tracy. Do you have to cut a certain number of paper, pieces of paper or do you, can you sort of freestyle it? No, you need eight for the bottom and eight for the top so that you've got equal numbers. And then as you bring those together to make the circle. Um, so presumably when you fold it, you can sort of think, all right, that's two pieces, fold it, yeah. or fold it, I see, I see. Yeah. So I fold it rather than using a pen and pencil because that can be quite a difficult thing to do. Um, and also once you've folded it and you open it out again, you've got the fold lines to use as a guide to cut. And I thought it was very, you know, I really liked it, but I also ended up thinking, oh, yes, you know, we've got these battery-operated um, candles, you mm. know, tea lights, and you could even put one inside it, couldn't you? Just sort of yes. spin through and have it glowing in the dark. So that's great thank you very much indeed tracy and now it's time to move on and join in with stera and as with tracy's activities if you go to our website www.together2012.org.uk look at the pull down menu for join in from home you will find all of stera's previous films and the film as with the others will be up on our highlights and links page from about six o'clock on Friday night. Oh. Hi, I'm Stara, and I was watching butterflies. Lots of butterflies. I was watching them. I, I painted a butterfly. It was good. I'm beautiful. Oh. Oh. And now it's that time we always wait for with bated breath, which is the Clockwork Paralympics. We've been running the Clockwork Paralympics every week since April 2020. And with the real Paralympics coming up in just a fortnight's time, starting on the 24th of August, we're taking it even more seriously than usual. All right, Robin, we'll introduce the teddies in a minute. Um, Julie, let me give you Tanny. 
We were putting up different bears each week, but since being given Tanny, I think in May for my birthday, with her own Together 2012 medal and her own sporting outfit, it's really Tanny's gig at the moment. What we do in the Clockwork Paralympics, as it says on the tin, we race clockwork toys. Whoever wins has the right to put a medal on their bear. Their bear is the medal bearer. And our bears are taking part before we think that we're massive. Well, of course, we are massive teddy bear fans. But the real reason the teddy bears are on the stream is they're taking part in the virtual bear hunt, named, I think, in tribute of Michael Rosen's bear hunt. And it, it started, I think, actually before COVID, and it became virtual as a result of the pandemic. But the idea on an ongoing basis is if you've got a teddy bear in your window or a teddy bear on your live stream, then it makes life much more fun for children and young people because they can bear hunt. And I think particularly when quite a lot of stuff is still closed or indeed will never reopen just because people, you know, children's activities have been badly hit. Just putting a teddy bear in your window might make somebody smile all day so yeah let's have your teddy bear introduced now robin um well in in this it having uh, been defeated two weeks ago um he's renamed himself and this is now adam okay we're hoping we're hoping that the name change uh will, will be you know obviously we won last week um but adam didn't the week before so Adam is representing Birmingham in the Commonwealth uh, on behalf of Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Yes, um, we can even say yes. It's London 2012 versus Birmingham 2022. So just a little bit more audio description of Tanny. She's a honey coloured bear with red and white trainers, a blue sports top and a little red sweatband around her head so to join in from home all you have to do is decide are you going to support the toy on the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen so robin which side are you picking this week uh, we're going to go the left side of the screen as we see it well, we're back poolside, but not in the pool. We've just got a track next to the pool. And I believe we are still racing clockwork meerkats this week. So it's a it's a sprint. All of the meerkats have been sprinting. So it's only a few seconds long. Robin will moan and groan depending on who's won or not. <laughs> And um, we'll just give us a tiny bit of audio description. So here's the Clockwork Paralympics for the 13th of August coming up now. Well, here we are. It looks more like a speed skating track, actually. Let's hope that they really do have their skates on as they zoom across the uh, the, the track. So we're rooting for the bear on the left uh, for Birmingham. And I think it's going to be an off any second now. Oh, yes. And we go, look at that. Oh, <laughs> oh, heavens above. We've, we, the, okay, there's going to be a rerun. I think technical errors there <laughs> going on. Well, I have. I do feel when it's on video, it's hard to think that a rerun is a <laughs> result. I have to break I, it to you. We, as ever, magnanimous in defeat, Adam would like to congratulate Tanny Bear. Well done. Hooray. Hooray. And Tanny has a gold plastic 2012 medal, which the mayor gave out to people who'd volunteered. And of course, we actually started as a volunteer led project to celebrate the Paralympics in the main host borough of Newham. And I think it's really brought that back seeing the Paralympics the other couple of weeks and really looking forward to the Paralympics. If you weren't so competitive, Robin, you wouldn't have won so many real medals. But there you go. Tanny's got the gold plastic one. And never mind, Adam. Better luck, better luck next time. But we've got the Paralympics coming up, like I say, on the 24th. But in the meantime, there's lots of things that we can recommend for you to do from home over the week ahead. So who wants to kick off? I'll, I'll go first, actually. Just give me one moment to uh, bring all my info over. 
Okay, so I'm going to start. Um, all my stuff this week actually have come from Disability Arts Online, uh, one of our, um, you know, another great British disability arts um, website, actually. Um, uh, so this first one uh, is called the Friday Night Love Poem. Um, uh, it is a, it is online. Um, it, it's it's the only one of mine this week that, that has a, a, a price attached to it. It is eight pounds or five pounds. Uh, with a concession um and it, it it's kind of it's a it just looks like a fun story it's it's a kind of story um of what it was like apparently to be um a teenage girl <laughs> in the early 2000s um and uh, the, the kind of it's a bit of a coming of age story but it just looks really good fun you know i i, I Brilliant. And thanks for flagging up Disability Arts Online, because if you want to read about artists, you want to read reviews, you want to read artist blogs, all of that information and how to access it will be on our website. But I think it's Disability Arts Online, isn't it? Or disabilityarts.org.uk, but we can confirm that. As I said for dressing up to go out to stay in, I'm dressed up to go out to stay in to go to MixCon. So I'm just going to give two recommendations. One is next Wednesday, the 18th of August from 8 to 9.30. And it's mixing hip hop with Thomas Tillyman. And he's one of the top hip hop mixing engineers of our time. And he's going to take us through that process. And then the following day, Thursday the 19th at 6 o'clock, there's Mixing 101 with Kate Elwanger. And she's a producer, engineer and multi-instrumentalist, also known as Dot. And that's the absolute basics of mixing a song. So like I say, they're free, they're online, you book via Eventbrite, but I'll pop those links up on the highlights and links page. Julie, what do you have for us? Well, after you were talking a couple of weeks ago about the Edinburgh Festival, I got quite interested and I remember... It's all right, it was only last week. <laughs> was it? Sorry. Yes, of course. Oh, time. <laughs> it's all <laughs> over the place at the moment, isn't it? Um, but I remembered going to the Edinburgh... Um, what is it? The Edinburgh Book Fair, isn't it? Book Festival. Book Festival, that's right. Because uh, we, we, we saw a friend of ours... Um, talk about his book which was lovely John, o John O'Donoghue um, well this has come up it's free, it's online and I think the um, it's fairly flexible it's uh, by an author called M.G. Leonard who I hadn't come across before uh, and she's talking Free as a Bird which is the first of a series of um, books that she's written stories actually I guess about a, a bird loving detective and I thought, oh, that kind of mixes all the genres up quite interestingly. Um, so it's he's called Twitch, and it's a Twitcher series because twitching is is the um, the vernacular, the sort of slang word for for bird watchers. I don't think every bird watcher likes to call themselves that, but but Twitchers they are. Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> risk of insulting some more bird watchers yes and i understand that the book festival has moved venues and that there is a number of things online so i'm going to check that out tracy what do you have for us um i've got a couple of things i'll start off with the first one is um the organization called the art of living and it's um health and happiness workshop uh it's on monday the 16th of august uh, and that's at Eventbrite, but all the details will be on our website. And it's about managing your stress levels and increasing your energy levels. I could do with a bit of that. Yeah, I think, well, let's just sign all of us up for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tracy, thank you. What else have you got from Disability Arts Online, Robin? Okay, this one, I, I, apologies if we mentioned it before, but I don't remember it. It's called um, The Walkie Talkies. Um, and it's a, um, a, a series. It's a series of ten digital collages made by Michelle Baharia, um, all about uh, travelling on London transport. I mean, almost specifically London buses. Um, but interestingly, it, it's based on a poem that was written by David Morris. Um, golly, it doesn't actually say when he wrote it, but I mean, it's got to be you know fifteen years ago, I guess. Um, 
and and you know kind of the experiences of of as a disabled as a wheelchair user what traveling on london transport was like um and then it's you know they're, they're collages that, that, that explore the absurd and the unfortunate and with it the ordinariness of um bus journeys through london great and i think we talked about david last week but just to say you can find out more about the late david morris on our website under about us um so my last recommendation really takes us back to Canada and we've done quite a lot of work with Canadian partners. So this is a virtual tour of a show called A Like Vision, the group of seven at a hundred. And we haven't got time to go into it now, but I, the group of seven were a very, very famous group of Canadian artists a hundred years ago. So this is free, it's online, there's a limit of 20 people or 20 devices each time. So it's on Sunday the 15th and again on the 22nd from 5.30 to 6.30. It's organised by the McMichael Canadian Art Collection and it allows you to examine works close up from home. It's led by an expert. So, um, yeah, I just remember going around the Royal Ontario Museum and seeing the Group of Seven's work, but thinking I've never heard of them. You know, in the same way we don't hear much about Australian artists. You know, we hear lots about American artists, very little about Canadian. So I would thoroughly recommend that. I think we've got time for just one more. Who wants to jump in, Julie? Got me first, and she's the right? boss. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't think so. But um, no, I, I came across a film on iPlayer, a documentary was made and aired actually on, on BBC4 a little while ago. So it's still available on the iPlayer about Leonora Carrington. Now, I'm very, very enthusiastic about Leonora Carrington because she was born in 1917 in Lancashire um, and her family were, were quite wealthy. So she had quite a privileged education, but she ended up in Europe because she didn't really fit in anywhere. She didn't want to go to court. She wanted to go to um, art school, and she did. She actually went to Chelsea Art School for a year. But she ended up with Max Ernst, who was a, a surrealist painter in France, in Paris, just before the Second World War, and the invasion of the uh, Gestapo came. And they were under tremendous threat. I'm going to have to get you to just wind that up, but it's a video that tells this story. Is it, it is. She ended up in Mexico. She died in um, 2011, so she was quite long-lived. But she was a surrealist artist, and she was also a mental health system survivor, and she wrote about that, which is why I think I'm quite enthusiastic. Brilliant. Well, it sounds great, but that's all we've got time for this week. And before we move on to our and finally piece, which Robin flagged up earlier. So before we wave goodbye, I just wanted to remind you that next week on Monday, we have a special workshop as part of our Summer Together programme with the cellist Joanne Cox. It's part of her defined journey series she's created a wonderful online resource to be enjoyed from home all you need is an internet browser this is an introductory session on zoom and then we have another workshop with joanne on monday the 6th of september same time 11 to 12 and next wednesday our kitchen carnival workshop series continues with the international carnival artist clary salandy if you'd like more details of either of those, just drop us a line, info at together2012.org.uk. The links won't be on our website, you know, really for safer space policy reasons. So drop us that line, info at together2012.org.uk. We'd love to see you there. But now, thank you so much for joining us. Robin, did you just want to give us a final word for your interview? Just really en enjoy Patrice, enjoy his character, and enjoy his voice. Stay, stay well, stay creative. So today I'm talking with Patrice Name Barna. Um, Patrice, I, I... you have quite a journey. Born in Ghana, ended up working at the RSC and many other arts venues and stuff in the UK. Can you just give us a really um, exciting but brief 
description of your journey? Uh, hi, everybody. How you doing? Thank you so much, Robin, for uh, inviting me into your village. <laughs> um, yes, my journey started in Sierra Leone, West Africa, watching people talking and selling in marketplaces, looking at masquerades and songs and events where there was always music and song and food um, to the need to use stories to address change and human flourishing. And that took me all the way to having to invent my own opportunities. Um, and then in England, I went to street theatre, <laughs> call it street theatre, but busking, <laughs> <laughs> busking. Um, and I couldn't really play that many instruments, but um, I would play whatever I could so that I could earn travel card so I could get to the next place of learning or opportunity that went to TIE, theatre and education, community, theatre, um, black theatre in the early 90s, and then to um, radio and television and bits of film. And in between, I was getting closer and closer, more experience um, to theatre. But all along, I was still practising um, skills in order to deliver in community spaces or what I call diverse environments. So I was always transferring my experience into the so-called other space, <laughs> right? A non-exclusive space or community spaces. And yeah, so that's that's been my journey. But all along the way, there were key people who just welcomed me encouraged me, loved me, and um, gave me a sense of dignity. Along, when I say along the way, very randomly along the way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so people like Annie Castledine, Catherine Hunter, um, so many to name, and they guided my sense of ethics of how to be a better person, big challenge, and a more effective artist. It's really interesting because uh, I've had other artists who've said that the key people have have made the difference to their careers. Yeah. Um, and and actually to um, to foster those relationships is really paramount. You're a storyteller. Yeah. I know that. Why do you think storytelling is so important to everybody and, of course, to yourself? Storytelling is stories are fundamentally essential to what it means to be human and what it means to live with dignity. Most of us experience Cool, take your time. I'll just edit anything out that you're not happy with. Most of us experience outsiderness, some more severe than others. And I've come to see and experience that the silencing of your story. is what um, exacerbates outsiderness. So if you can't tell your story, you might as well be a good. <laughs> no, no offense to goods, <laughs> right? But, you know, if you cannot tell your story, you cannot be visible. And if you are invisible, you might as well not exist. 
And so for me, telling stories is putting flesh on silence. And as an African living in the West, the interaction, our shared history, our common humanity, because of the way history has gone, I've experienced silencing in that way. So stories was all, has always been and will continue to be a way that we can see each other and listen to each other and act upon what we hear, what we fear, and what we dream about. And when I say we, I mean all of we, you know, all of we beyond the categorization of uh, humanity that we seem so bent on. I know we need categories, but, you know, so that's how I see story. And, well, I mean, you know, I'm interviewing you today from Together 2012. That is our name. It is about, you know, people coming together and seeing difference as positive recognizing what all of us have got to offer so kind of bring it forward obviously as uh, as an artist who um you know has trod the boards for years um you know and been in james bond films with yeah, huge yeah. roles i realize oh, <laughs> um it, the pandemic um, and, and, you know, the shutting of theatres and the closing down of arts work has hit us all hard. Um, how are you working to come out of that? You know, there's, there's a, you know we've all had moments of, of, of sadness and depression and anxiety, but now we're building, you know, we're, we're hoping, we're looking forward. So how are you working out your, the next stage of your story, if you like? Um through a rededication to prayer, through certain discoveries or reflections that I've gone on in the past 18 months, um, because uh, I think part of an artist's vocation or journey is appreciating that there are seasons. Sometimes there are busy seasons and sometimes there's a season to rest and to, to pause, you know? So from what I've learned from that journey, I'm now building or constructing, you know, some of my own work, which is interdisciplinary, quite a number of self tapes because I'm doing more films now and building that, um, you know, and uh, I've, learned over the last 18 months to write down a list of people that uh, I can call and talk to. You're on that list, by the way, but I haven't got round. I go through them because you don't want to bore people. So <laughs> <laughs> I go through them. So I'm getting to you at some point. But we are here we are anyway, Robbie. But um because there was a lot of loneliness and stuff like that. I was feeling really isolated. And I literally had to write a list to, to remind myself that I know wonderful people out there. There are wonderful people out there. But I had to make a practical list. I had to go, you know, <laughs> oh gosh, there's like, you know, there's at least 20. But they live in different parts of the world. And at the best of times, because of our schedules, we're not engaging but um so all those things you know looking at the glass half full is key to me planning the next 10 years when i'll be i'll be 17 10 years time so i'm now looking at that like how you spend time the value of time and the value of interaction and the choices i make as a storyteller a lot i want to do i have like three four projects now writing um, um, performing hot housing. I've got a thing called a lab called the Decolonial Salon, which is about putting an abridged version of a great story, usually a real life story, but using aesthetics and instruments and movements that might not be 
easily accessible like informal learning academies, right? But then, so let's say 40 minutes of that, the next hour is spent with a small audience actually talking about how we put it together, why we put it together, what was the experience of the artists as they were. So not just a post-show discussion, it's actually going into the um, process and techniques and sounds from maybe a culture that we might not be so familiar with, you know. Um, I've been working on that for about three years and now I'm ready, ready to go. Uh, yeah, so just looking to see how I can put my experiences and what I've learned from my journey, limitations, as well as strengths for the service of, of others. Brilliant. Um, I want to say thank you for being so wonderfully open um, in this interview and positive and looking forward to the next 10 years, which yeah. you know is something kind of really good to be able to do. Um, I'd like just to ask you to finish um, with a, a short monologue, I guess, really. Well, um, sometimes I'm asked to uh, go and talk about diversity, which I just talk, I just use stories um, that are inspiring stories about how people have engaged with difference, right? Um, so that's how I kind of approach that whole area. And one of the stories I came across recently um, was a story of a man, American white man called Tom Perilio. Uh, he's an American congressman. Uh, he had been in Sierra Leone about 20 years ago, um, dealing with the fallout, peace building after the civil war that had happened. So anyway, he had to travel back to America. Um, I think he's um, a very close relative had passed. So he's at the airport in Sierra Leone. And this young woman, mother, comes up to him and says, I need you to do a favor. He doesn't know this woman at all. Now, this woman had been, as a Sierra Leonean, had been living in America and had gone back to Africa and had taken her five-year-old daughter. And while she was there, she's an American citizen, but, you know, she went back. While she was there, the child, five years old, developed a very serious illness and had to fly back to America instantly. But there was only enough money for one ticket. So... She got, she just, by faith, went to the airport. So I don't know how I'm going to get my daughter on this plane. I can't go, but she has to go back. So she, she said to the people at the desk, who's going to America? So they pointed to Tom Perilio, this white American man. And he's sitting there in with his own grief. And so she goes up to him, she says, please, look after my daughter Get her back to America, please. And so he was like, no. <laughs> and she pleaded with him. And he said, okay. He said he didn't even know what he was doing. So he said, having to take this five-year-old African child, you know, that he doesn't know, she doesn't know him. Anyway, they get on the plane and the little kid is crying, you know, distraught, obviously having left her mother. So he sings her the only song, the African song he knows, and he only knew one verse, <laughs> and he sings it over and over and over and over again to try to calm the kid down. Anyway, they've got a number of stops and transits and so on and so forth. You can imagine all the issues. Well, who's this child? You know, where, where you know, how do you know her? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they get to the, um, they get to America, and he has to take her through, cost, you know, all the customs to get her to the person that was going to pick her up. And in doing that, he missed his flight and missed the funeral that he was going to. Now, the point about the story is, they, as that five-year-old child grew up, she, was, she knew she had had a, somebody who saved her. And the mother and her were always, who is that guy? 
because this was a life-changing moment. And eventually they found him and they reunited and it's online. His name is Tom Perolio. And it's just a story about, he didn't look at difference. He didn't look at when they went beyond the color of his skin. You know, he just reached out. He just reached out and said, okay, I'm gonna help. The mother had to exercise trust and faith in a complete stranger with her child, you know? So that's the story. It's not a monologue, but it's, a, it's one story that came to mind. And it's a real story, you know, true story. Even when I heard it, it, it just, you know, it, it, it did something to me when I heard that story. That's so, yeah. I mean, and a, and a wonderful moment to close on because that faith, the dignity, the belief, the compassion, yeah. and the lack of uh, prejudice, I yeah. think we'll finish on that note. So thank yeah. you so much, Patrice. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. God bless you and your family, Robin. Thank you for speaking with me and listening to me.